powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. All right, Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. And, of course, you can check out the Inside the Birds podcast with Adam Kaplan and Jeff Mosher. Don't forget the Inside the Birds pregame show on Sunday at 10 a.m. to get you ready for the Eagles and the 49ers. Today, it's Adam Kaplan. He is in the house for today's edition of Football at Four, and it's brought to you by Caesars Entertainment Group of Atlantic City. Come experience the ultimate sports destination all season long at the Wild Wild West, Tropicana, Harris Resort, Atlantic City. Book your game day experience today at Caesars.com. There he is, Adam Kaplan from the Inside the Birds podcast, a 1-0 and Eagles team, 32-6, to though, Adam. All right, they won the game, but 32-6, to is that the story as we enter Philadelphia and San Francisco? Yeah, no doubt. Look, that was incredibly impressive. But all last week, I stuck with the Eagles. I never backed down. Last, uh, uh, yeah, start the week on Monday. I was going to pick the Eagles. All the information I gathered led me to pick the Eagles. I picked them 24-20. to I didn't see it as a blowout and. Really, Mike, the first series of the game, I'm scratching my head. I'm like, wow, the, I'm kind of shocked that Atlanta drove down the field like that. But what set up the Eagles for success was they did not give up a touchdown. Despite how Atlanta just marched down the field, all these big runs, uh, they seemingly couldn't stop Calvin Ridley on the first drive. And then after that, really after the second series, Atlanta's offense was shut down the rest of the game. It's really incredible the, the adjustments that the coaches made. The discipline got better against the run as the second quarter progressed. And they could not get a thing done in the passing game. Matt Ryan held on to the ball a lot. And they did some things we did, you know, we didn't know they were going to do. There's no way we would know. We don't have their game plan. Uh, it was something to see. I, I got to give these coaches credit. They had their players ready to play, whereas Atlanta completely got out coached and out schemed. Yeah, it's funny uh, you say that because obviously uh, one of the things we didn't know was uh, the coaching staff, how well prepared this Philadelphia Eagles team was. What impressed you about the preparation uh, that the, the coaching staff, both on the offensive side and the defensive side of the ball? All right, Mike, let's get started with offense, right? So they kind of knew, at least they, 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 they figured out, that Atlanta would go with a lot of zone defense. Or they came into the game saying, you know what, we're going to help Jalen Hurts out. We're going to go with what we, what we believe will help him as a get out of his hands quickly, help him get comfortable and accurate. They got it out of his hands quickly. A lot of running after the catch. This is the, the our first scoop uh, that we put out back in, I don't know, February, for Jeff and I did on our show, was that we had heard this is going to be more of a West Coast offensive scheme. Where they called it West Coast or not, it was irrelevant. It's what do they see this conceptually. It's a lot of get it out quickly, whoever the quarterback was. And now then, uh, I don't know if Nick Sirianni knew who the quarterback was going to be, whether it's going to be Wentz then would eventually be traded in March or Jalen Hurts. But whatever it was going to be, it was going to force the quarterback to get out of the hands quickly. Well, it's exactly what happened. Uh, and and you know what? Hurts was super accurate. Yeah. The, the big thing, though, Mike, this was an issue for him in training camp, is being decisive. Uh, the, the word that I received was that there were too many instances where he'd hold on the ball too long and, and not get rid of it. He wasn't looking to run, but he was indecisive with it. The, the progression that he made was he wasn't always looking to run. Like last summer... Because he had no offseason and no preseason, he just was so far behind in his learning. And this year, obviously, he's got a better idea, though. It's a new offense for him. He had another one in his career, Oklahoma, Alabama, Eagles year one, Eagles year two. It's really remarkable what he's gone through. But he's he, he did a very good job, very accurate. And uh, you got to feel really good if you're an Eagles fan on the road. And, and remember now, they we didn't know this going into the game. They opened the dome, so it was warmer in there. Uh, there's some challenges on the road, but apparently the Eagle fans travel pretty well, pretty well down south. Yeah. And just overall, Mike, their offense was it was really efficient. Uh, save a couple of plays that they'd like to have back. The offensive line was absolutely dominant, particularly Jordan Mailata, who, from what we were hearing, had his best game as a pass blocker in his short career. You know, it's funny you say that because, uh, you know, Mailata, Samala, Kelsey, Brooks, Johnson, they're all going to play again this week. They didn't have that happen last year. And the, the having that continuity with those five guys, how that could change the outlook for each week, including a game against a very good defensive front this week. Right, and then you, you look at um, you know, last week, the Eagles defense, before we get to the Niners, the Eagles, Eagles defense brought it. They really did. They were so consistent. After those 
first couple series, Jonathan Gannon threw so much at Matt Ryan. Now, I'm surprised he didn't turn it over. And the Eagles are his own defense. That's what we were told months ago, and that's what they are. Now, how they deploy it was a little different from what we had heard in training camp, but that doesn't mean it won't change this week. In fact, Gannon is so sharp mentally, and he just has such an idea of, of conceptually what this defense should look like. It would not surprise me if he changes coverage up once again. So th- that's the thing I love about this coaching staff. They're adaptable, they're pliable, and that's what you really need in the National Football League. Yeah, right. So uh, there, there's so much intrigue in this game because last week, as you mentioned, you know, we, we felt that the Eagles had an offensive line advantage against their defensive front. We also felt the Eagles had a defensive line advantage against their offensive line. Let's look at those two areas this week. Philly's offensive front against the San Francisco defensive front, which is uh, very, you know, very good. You know, that offensive line versus the San Francisco front seven. All right, so let's look at the Niners have injury issues. Eric Armstead, 91, should play with his adductor injury. Javon Kinlaw, they think he's going to play, as I understand it. They don't know 100% for sure. He's listed as questionable. Um, he didn't play last week. That that definitely uh, was probably a factor in the Lions coming back. So they, they got journeymen like uh, Zach Kerr, who's been around a long time, has been on a bunch of teams. Uh, he would fill in if, uh, if, if um, you know, Kinlaw can't play. They'd have to go to committee with at D-tackle. Nick Bosa did not play his usual amount of snaps, but he certainly was impactful. That's a guy who's, got, who's the right defensive end who will line up over my lot of this will be a challenge for him. What Bosa has is he gets low like his brother. He's actually more explosive than his brother Joey. Uh, now, of course, he's come back from an ACL injury, so I don't know that'll be himself. You said the front seven. This is a major injury. Drake Greenlaw, one of the better young outside linebackers in the league. He's done. He's going to have groin surgery. Uh, could be out as much as two months. They'll see what happens when the surgery is done. That'll crush them. They have no depth at, at outside linebacker. That, that All these injuries, Mike, this helps the Eagles. There's no yeah. question about it. Uh, so I, just comparing them, I think the Eagles will hold up fairly well. Uh, again, D. Ford is a, is a speed rusher. He's 55. He's had significant injury issues ever since they traded for him from Kansas City. He came in three years ago with a pre-existing injury. He has never been the same. Uh, but they get what they can out of him. I do like the Eagles' chances here to win because of these injuries up front. All right. Uh, you know, we had Sal on earlier. He mentioned he likes Ertz and Goddard this week. You just mentioned the, the linebacker problem. So how about Ertz and Goddard this week? Because we talked about it last week, Adam. That was one of the storylines, how many snaps, how many uh, uh, targets. Well, uh, Ertz had that hamstring issue, so I don't know how much we can read into that. But he got like 61% of the snaps. I think that Goddard was around 74, somewhere in there. So I don't know how much of a read we get on playing time there. But they should have some room to roam this week. Yeah, we know Goddard's going to play more in Ertz. That was never in question. The question is how much more will right. he play more in Ertz? And uh, Ertz had the hamstring injury. I give him credit for coming back in. The difference is very simple. Goddard's a three-down tight end. The Eagles don't see him like that. I mean, they, they could do it. We don't have a hold, though, on how much 12 versus 11. The Eagles, the Eagles last year played the most snaps of 12 personnel, 33.2% of the time. I know it won't be that this year. I can't tell you if it's going to be 25, 27. We won't know. I would say after the quarter mark, we'll probably have a pretty good idea. Uh, the, the way that you beat cover three, which the Niners played uh, last week, uh, one advanced uh, personnel guy said that looking at the Niners tape, when his team, you know, he's starting early. His team plays the Niners, I think, in late October. But he said in his early studying is that from this game that he watched last week, the Niners play, uh, playing the Lions, Hawkinson beat him on cover, two, cover three beaters, uh, slants, and over the middle, Hawkinson got wide open. Now, some of it's because they were so far up. The Niners played soft coverage in the second half by 28, 38 to 10. They, but nevertheless, there, there are certain things you can do against cover three. They're always voids in cover three. The Eagles have to find them. So I, I could certainly see Goddard having a big game to, this week. And also, you know, the question, I know people are wondering about this, and we're not going to have the answer to this um, until the game starts, but typically coaches don't want to help Lyman unless they have to. I, I don't see why the Eagles have to go into the game thinking Mylotta can't at least hold his own against uh, Joey Bosa, excuse me, Nick Bosa. But we're not going to know until the game starts and see how the first you know, couple series go. You hope that they don't have to have a six lineman or, or – um, right. r- slide coverage, uh, slide protection over with uh, an extra tight end. That may happen. Uh, Goddard could be on that side. We, we'll, we'll, we'll know, but we'll know in the game. But I was blown away by what uh, one person else source said about uh, Mylotta. He said that, quote, no one got within two feet of, of Hertz on his side. 
it's definitely an interesting story. Now, uh, different look this week, three four four three. Does that present yeah. any differences here? No, no. It's uh, in nickel. Teams are always playing forty three anyway, gotcha. with, with rare exception. It's just on base downs. Yeah, they could go for thirty four. Um, they're just got a better front. They got a better front than Niners. But I mean, if definitely. Kinlaw doesn't play for the second week in a row, that would be huge. The stuff on my lot is interesting. He, he, to me. I, I described him, uh, Adam, as like Joel and Bead, like. That level of, like, here's a guy who had no experience, just said, hey, you look like a guy who could play basketball. You look like a guy who could play. I actually, you saw, did you see Michael Buffer's tweet earlier this week? No, did he have one? He, he no, tweeted that, the Eagle, why don't the Eagles use him as a running back? Which, But I said. Like he was in rugby. Yeah. Right. I say, though, I would love to have seen them, like, I would love to have seen the conversation of what position this guy might play. He had no experience. Like, who said, but, like, I would have loved to have seen him with his speed, explosion, athleticism, playing defensive tackle. Who is blocking him? Oh, you know what, Mike? Actually, I have not talked about this. I totally forgot about it. So going back to 2018 on my work on my lot, because I, I didn't know anything about him. I'll admit it. I, I, didn't, sure. I had no information on the guy. And I was just checking around it because I had heard that he did very well in the, it was called the regional combine. It was before the IMG workout with Jeff Stoutland. He did really well on it. I was like, all right, maybe someone signs him after the draft. I didn't know that he'd be drafted. Anyway, I the one of the things I heard is some teams saw him as a defensive tackle, not a left tackle. So that's the thing is like the Eagles obviously had him scouted right. Give Howie Roseman and, and Jeff Stoutland and their offensive their front office credit, but not everyone saw him the same. That's the interesting part of that draft, which surprised yeah. me. Um, so interesting. This I think this matchup is so appealing. The the Eagles mm-hmm. line against them. Uh, let's look at a couple other things. The Eagles wide receivers. We know in years yeah. past. They've had no playmakers. They had no help. I mean, Wentz essentially slow. carried wow. right, carried them to the playoffs <laughs> two years ago. Uh, how about now? I mean, I loved Adam what what they did with Watkins the first three plays. They almost set it up like you're a wrestling guy. It's like the slow burn story of three passes to him. Now we have to account for you the rest of the day, and never went back to him. So when is that so angle going to play itself out? You know, <laughs> does he hit the home run ball? I, I love yeah. what the wide receivers bring and the way Sirianni used them. Yeah, and the great thing is, as, as you were talking about, they knowing the, the team. Other, it's not like okay, when the when you're facing the Raiders, you know Darren Waller's going to get most of their pass targets here. Smith got eight targets. Rager got six. Goddard got five. Sanders got some checkdowns and was using the pass game. You mentioned Watkins, the first three plays. Gainwell had three targets. And I think his his role, we didn't even talk about it. I, I Man, that floored me. When Boston Scott did not get used in offense, I did not see that at all. It's, that's the thing about the staff is while we can't – we don't we still don't know the rotations yet. We There's certain things that could change. We only have one game. The preseason means absolutely nothing in offensive defense. So we only have the one game to analyze. And things could change here. Uh, there, there's some things that happened in that game. I think we would all admit that we didn't see coming. So – uh, I did love the game plan, the usage uh, by the personnel on both sides of the football, the defensive guys standing up, um, using 10 defensive linemen. Just really smart uh, planning by the coaches. Uh, Eagles offense obviously put up 32 last week. Uh, they gave up six on the defensive side of the ball. Adam Kaplan from the Inside the Birds podcast. Let's flip to the Eagles defense. Jimmy Garoppolo, Trey Lance. We saw a little bit of Lance. Do you think uh, more of Lance? this week is in store or about the same? I mean, I could see him doing a little bit more. The, the thing I'm, where I'm concerned about is, because he only had four plays and he had a touchdown. How do they how do they deploy him? Like, do they do it? Okay, this week we'll go for a series and a half. I I, I don't have that answer, but that's kind of, you know, what, what, what um, geez, I could go back to Jaws or Randall Cunningham in 86. Right. Or Randall would be the, th- the third down specialist. The, the game has evolved in 35 years. But I'm just fascinated, Mike, to see. Uh, yeah, I, it, I, I would expect him to do a little bit more this week. It's just, it's just so fascinating. I, I cannot wait. There's so many subplots to this game. There, there, there really are. He goes run defense, which was awful to start the game. And then, you know, how do they handle Kyle Shanahan? Um, do they take shot plays? You mentioned their, their pass game was short area. Well, they take some shots. They didn't take any last week because uh, you just you talked about their speed. They're so fast at wide receiver. Um, and Quez Watkins is, is their, um, as I was told by a team source, is by far the best deep threat. And they, they got Rayer could flat out fly, and so could Devontae Smith. But Watkins is a different gear. I'm just waiting to see what they do. Yeah, and uh, one of the interesting matchups will be the Eagles' front, you know, their rotation of guys 
this is a much better offensive line than the Atlanta one. So, can they get the same type of pressure? They blitzed only 10% of the time last week, Philadelphia did. Uh, do they have to do more, implore more of that this week if they don't get the same pressure with that? So, the Eagles' defensive line against their offensive line is going to be a very, I think, interesting subplot to how this game goes. Oh, there's, there's, there's no doubt. When you, when you look at this situation, Mike, there are just so many stories here. I, I cannot wait to see um, what the Niners do to get take away those passing lanes because they saw the Eagles what they were doing. They're short, throwing it short. And then what did Brandon Ayuk had a very quiet game for the Niners last week. He's their shot play guy. I got to think. I know Ayuk was nursing a hamstring injury. He's not even in the injury report, so there are no excuses here. There's so many things that could happen, and the weather's going to be great in the high 70s. We got rain today in Philly, but it's fine. So this could be a fun game, and um, there's there are a lot of things that could happen in this game. I expect the game, by the way, to be much closer than this last week's game. Okay, so yesterday Ryan Paganetti was on with us. Now, he was on the staff last year. Oh, was he? A linebacker coach. Yes, very, very interesting and informative. And I told him, you know, you guys didn't do a very good job against Kittle last year, and he kind of laughed. 15 catches know, on 15 targets. So I, asked, record, him, I yeah. asked him how would he defend Kittle this time around. He said third and obvious passing situations that he would put Slay on him. Do you think that's something you see mm. happen? His reasoning, well, Adam, is yeah. he doesn't think that the rest of the 49er wideouts scare him enough that he needs Slay out there, that he can use others. Well, remember now, the Eagles, based on what we heard in offseason and in training camp, what we saw in training camp, what we heard, and in week one, they're a zone defense. Now, you could play what's called a split zone. You could play half man, half zone. You, you could do that. You could um, have Slay travel uh, with Kittle. You can do that. Uh, look, last year, Slay struggled against a physical receiver uh, in Metcalf. So it, it, it's you don't have a lot of choices here. You could Eric Wilson's a good cover guy. He's not a good run game guy. You could do that. You could try Singleton, who had a monster game. He had the pick six last year. His coming out party. Yep. My lotto was great against the Niners in that game. But getting back to the defense, there are a couple things you can do, but there are not a lot of them. So that's one of the subplots and how they do it. It, it, it it's ama- You know what is amazing about this game? It's week two, and we're we're all jacked up for teams that are one and zero because. It's the NFC. It is a conference game. It's Eagles home opener with this new staff. And the Niners rolled so much on offense. And you see, the Eagles scored 32, as you said. Niners scored over 40. This has got some fireworks to it. But often when we think a game's going to be high scoring, it's not. But I look forward to seeing what transpires. Yeah. And real quick, what Paganetti said was also, he mentioned uh, Hargrave had the injury. And then he said he was really behind yeah. – learning a new system because they asked him to do a lot of things that Pittsburgh didn't ask him to do. So he really anticipates a huge year from him, and we kind of saw that in week number one. Oh, he's my breakout player of the year for the Eagles. I picked him as our player of the game on a pregame show. Uh, I I think he's going to be great. As one Eagle sir said to me, there were practices where he you just couldn't block him. He was just unstoppable. He's built low to the ground. He's not like a tall guy. He's, you know, in the neighborhood of 6'1 for a D tackle. But he gets so low and he's so explosive. Um, he's just great and he he cares. He's a he brings it. Fletcher Cox had a good game. He didn't show up the stat sheet, but I'm told he actually collapsed the pocket a bunch of times. He threw guys around. Their D line was dominant. It'll now this the other thing I didn't mention before we get out of here is the Niners offensive line is way better than Atlanta. So they're they're facing a better foe here in Philly, which is why it should be a tight game. All right, Adam Kaplan, your pick for Eagles 49ers will be? I got it. I struggle with it a little bit, but I, I'm coming down to, to, to schematics and, and certain advantages the Eagles have. I'm going to pick them in a tight one. All right, Eagles tight one. I like it. We've got a lot of tight ones today. Sal Powell, 27 24. He says, a come from behind victory. And you really? got a tight Eagles win. Yeah, it's come from behind in South Philly. First time. Who will in make the play? Yeah, who's going to make the play? That, to come that'll back? be interesting. That'll be interesting. All right, Adam Kaplan, don't forget, 10 o'clock, YouTube, Sunday. The whole gang will be there. Adam, Jeff, uh, Cosell, Jason, Avon, and an appearance from Quentin Michael as well as they do it every Sunday, 10 a.m., the Inside the Birds pregame show with that man, Adam Kaplan. Happy Friday, Adam.
Same to you, my friend. Thank you. All right, there he is, Adam Kaplan, uh, here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN, football at four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast.